encounter his presence. I thank you for coming today. I thank you for being bigger than the weather. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Father, we welcome the presence of God today to overflow in this place. We thank you for the grace of God, the peace of God that'll pass everybody's understanding. We thank you for grace to help anybody in their time of need. We look to you this day. We give you all the praise. Can you say amen, church? Come on, he's near. Let's take it back and let's worship him. Thank you, Father.
give him praise, lift your hands to him, worship him. Father, thank you. Blessing and honor and glory and power forever, forever. Blessing and honor and glory and power over. say thank you for loving me Holy Spirit today. Overflow this place, 
fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love will surround us. Oh, 
We're going to hallelujah. He loves you today. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Morning. We'll get the lights on here in a second. That way I can see everybody. Before Brother Bob steps up, I just wanted to make a real quick announcement about youth camp. If y'all were here Wednesday or you watched the online service, we mentioned some issues that we'd had at the past two camps with bed bugs. And uh, Thursday, I was able to get a hold of the actual Birchfield Ministry. They're the ones that hold Discovery Camp. They're over it. And spoke to the managerial staff there, and they've gone to great lengths to take care of the problem. They're using the latest, greatest techniques. They are treating once a week. So every week, every turnover, that thing's getting treated. And uh, they're doing everything they possibly can to take care of it. And at the moment, they assured me they were bug-free. So, you know, you're running thousands of kids through there. So I, it, it's, I've been thinking about this a lot the last few days. And every time you think about the camp, speak life over it. Those, those, those people are doing a wonderful job. Outside of this, we have zero complaints. It's been a blessing to our kids. It's given our kids a platform to be a blessing to others. And uh, so you think about it, men speak, no plague will come near our dwelling. They'll have the wisdom of God to deal with every situation that comes up. And that's the things that we can do instead of complaining about it and talking bad about them. We can lift them up. So I appreciate your time, and I just wanted to give you assurance because we're going to be talking a lot about the youth camp in the next few weeks. Brother Bob, sir. Glory to God. Mm. It's good to be in the house. My wife walked in. She stands next to me, and she goes, well, we, we gave away all our bulletins. You know, on a, on a day when folks might have chosen to have stayed home, we're here. So first-time guests, we appreciate y'all being here. It's an honor and a privilege. We can, I'm serious. We consider it an honor that you've chosen to come worship with us this morning. If you've got a home church and you're passing through, well, then uh, we, we, we know there's something here for you this morning. If you are uh, searching for a home church. Uh, we're going to put in a pretty strong bid this morning. If this is where you're anointed and appointed, we know that Holy Spirit's going to talk to you and, uh, and do so, but welcome. Everybody on the World Wide Web that's tuned in this morning, those of you who did, uh, for whatever reason, need to stay home this morning, welcome. If you're a few first-time viewer, welcome to you as well. <clears throat> Y'all ever... I don't know what he here ever gets on Facebook, but I hear that on Facebook, when you share something, you see how many views, if you will, and you've got Heartland Church connected to your Facebook, this is the only time we'll allow you, we're going to give you permission to get on your phone during the service, get on Facebook and share because we are live, share that because you never know 
You just don't know who's going to see that, that needs what we have here this morning. And it may be the only time they ever tune in. But the word that comes this morning is something that they're looking for. So you, you do that and then put your phone up, make sure it's on silent, and we won't have to tase you in your pew. Um, <clears throat> no, we haven't had to do that in at least 10 days. We've got a lot going on. And with that, when you look at your bulletin, you're going to see March is a, is a busy month. We've got uh, folks that are on spring break at various times. Uh, I preface, I say that as a preface to our next membership class we plan on being in April. So those of you who have been coming to Heartland for two months or more, and you know this is my home, this is where I'm going to be, this is where I need to be, uh, see me or my lovely wife who you probably saw when you walked in the front door uh, for the last two months. Uh, let us know and uh, we'll get you on a list for that coming membership class and uh, we want to we want to get you plugged in. Membership class is very easy. It's not a list of rules and regulations as according to Heartland Church. It is a list of beliefs as to what we stand for and it's all every last bit of it supported by the Word of God. And that's what we're going to present to you is where we stand and where the word lines up with what Heartland Church believes. So if that's you, let us know. We're going to be excited to, to get you plugged in. Uh, next Sunday, don't be late to church now. I'm just saying we're going to spring forward an hour. Now, whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. So... That means that that pre-service prayer that we're, our body's used to at 9.30 is going to feel like 8.30, but it's okay. He has the great, we have the grace to do it. So don't forget, next Saturday night, move your clocks forward an hour because we don't want you to uh, be late. But you know what? If you wake up late, just come on in. We won't laugh for long. March the 10th, which is a week from today, Woman to woman, finally, after a long four, 13 days, on the 14th day, they get together. It seems like a while, doesn't it, for the ladies to get together. Uh, that's a, a special, special time, ladies. So we, we, we hope that you will make a point to be here uh, 6 to 7.30 on the 10th. Noblemen, we meet every Thursday, 6.30, right out in Heart Rock. Um, hot coffee and hot Jesus. And uh, it's a good time. It's, it's a meeting. It is a hot word. It's a meeting for men about manly things and the, the challenges, um, the things that men face. And uh, I encourage you guys, it's, it's good. Ecclesia, when is spring break, Mandy? The 11th or something, somewhere in there. Okay, so they're still, Monday night's good for them. Don't forget the 18th, we're going to meet at our place. And Brian and Mandy will get that information to you. Our place, I mean mine and my. Wives, we're going we're gonna to get you Ecclesians out there uh, that night. Uh, I tell you what, it was, it was good to see you sitting out here Wednesday night, Brother Russell. He's our, our double digits guy. And uh, it, it's nice, you know, when we see Miss Bonnie able to sit in the sanctuary and enjoy his service because she does so much with Children's Church. Uh, she does so much, period. So that leads me to if you've got time and you're thinking, I just don't know where to serve, see Brother Ty, and he's going to get you hooked up somewhere. And we, we do need, we need children's workers. We really do. We don't throw just anybody in there, so don't think you're going to volunteer and get thrown in there that day. We've got a few things we want to check out first. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to be good stewards with your babies. Um, they're... Not only are they important, they are most important. They're the future not of just of this church, but of churches all over the world, I believe. Renovate Youth Camp. Um, parents, be getting ready for camp. I know it's not until June, but, man, you can't start early enough. Uh, and let's not forget, and those of you that were here Wednesday, this might be redundant, where we're going to repeat it. Those that were not, um, when we talk about believing that none of the kids are going to have to pay. We're not saying that the church is going to pay for every kid, the church general fund. That's not what we're believing for is that we as a body, 
We'll sow into Renovate Youth Camp. We'll sow enough $130 scholarships, or if you've got $5, guess what? Somebody else has got another five, and it'll add up really quick. So I, I'm not going to say if the Lord tells you to sow, because I believe that's good ground, and you really don't have to ask a lot of questions about that. The only question is, how much will you sow towards one of our youth going to renovate youth camp? Um, I, my belief is that we as a body will be able to, scholarship enough to where not only can that they, they don't have that mom and dad mom and daddy don't have to come up with the money but we'll get to feed them a good lunch coming and going okay so just know that parents get with Heath and Haley and uh, make sure that all the forms and things that need to be done uh, it's just not too early to get that taken care of because invariably it's going to be four hours before we leave and somebody's going to say was I supposed to fill something out I know that would never be any of any of us. Birthdays. Happy birthday to Noah Coleman celebrating this week. And Zayden Lopez celebrates this uh, week as well. Oh, shucks. Janessa, congratulations. <laughs> it's, uh, what, varsity cheerleader, I believe? Yeah, that's exciting. That's exciting. We are a sowing church. We believe we are a family. That's good, Pastor. That's the most important thing um, about the oneness that we enjoy. And when we talk about membership class, it's that's not just, hey, that means we get to dun you for this or that's not what membership here is all about. We, we hook up together and we, we care about each other. And there's a, a oneness in that, the oneness that means when we put change in these metal cans on the stage, that change goes to renovate youth and has done a complete renovation physically with buildings back there, but now we need more room. So if you've been sowing change into the buckets, don't stop. If you got breakthrough at Winter Bible Seminar, don't stop. Yes, sir. Very good. We're not a we're not a church that preaches a lot about revival. We're pretty vived all the time. Yes, sir. Yes. But we have to choose to stay there. Morning, Brother Tracy. We've got to choose. So, you know, just keep hanging into Winter Winter Bible Seminar and what you received and, and breakthrough that you got. Don't let it go. We've got people that got breakthrough at Winter Bible Seminar yes, that I, I talk to regularly reaffirming that breakthrough. Yes. So when you get financial breakthrough, don't let go of it. Yes, and no matter your circumstance, know that it's coming. God's grace towards us is excessively abundant. Oh, yes. He's a... If we will really take time daily to focus on the blessings in our lives instead of, well, I don't have this and I didn't get that. And you start focusing on, well, my tires are terrible on my car. Bless God you have a car because you know what? There's a lot of people that don't. Well, it doesn't run very good. Bless God it runs. There's a lot of people out there that don't have a car that runs. <laughs> My house is cold. My windows are drafty. Bless God, you've got a home. I don't think I'll ever get to buy my own home. Well, glory to God, you've got a place to live right now. We, we choose blessing or curses, life or death. There's no gray area. So in your finances, remember, for all things are yours and you are Christ and Christ is God's, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required, and to whom much has been committed of him, they will ask more, Luke chapter 12. When you get a lot, there's a lot expected of you. 
first of the month, a lot of folks that get paychecks first and 15th or you get one big check first of the month or just got a tax return. Two of the questions, the, the most frequent question I get asked financially is, well, do I, do I tithe off the gross or the net? First thing we're going to address is, where is your heart with giving? I mean, seriously, is the difference between the gross and the net that, that important to you? Is it the first fruits after taxes? If you're truly a cheerful giver, if you truly trust God, if Jesus is truly Lord over your finances, then that's a question you won't ask anymore. Well, do I do I have to I've, uh, do I have to tithe on my tax return? Come on. If if you're feeling like you have to, then there's no cheerful giver in the midst of that. There's, and it ties back into something I've been talking about a few consecutive services now, mechanics and relationship. You can get tied up in the mechanics of doing something, or you can develop the, the deep, meaningful relationship with the Lord that he desires for you. And I'll remind you, we, we will never get up here and beg for bread. And my intention is not to make you feel condemned about whether you tithe off the gross or the net or your tax return or somebody handed you $10 and you wouldn't spend all 10 of it. All I'm saying is God is in that amount that, number one, the tithe is set apart and holy. So that rebukes the devourer on your behalf, rebukes the devourer on your paycheck, the gross of your paycheck, rebukes the devourer of your tax return, rebukes the devourer of the unexpected funds that came into your mailbox one day and he opens the gates of heaven upon that and then when you sow beyond that and I don't care if you got a thousand dollars and you you tie the hundred bucks off of that and then put an extra dollar in there that extra dollar that's where the super abundance of the blessing comes the word works the word works but until you trust the word Trust it to the level that you know right now, and it'll keep growing, I promise you. It'll keep growing. We are a blessed body, folks. You are blessed. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the blessing that is upon us, Father. I thank you that we are tithers. You're our source. The seed came from you. So first, out of, out of obedient love for you, because we recognize you as our source. The tithe, that part that is set apart and holy, the first fruits, the very best that we have to offer. We thank you that because we put the tithe that belongs to you before you, that you rebuke the devourer. You open the gates of heaven upon us, Lord Father. Lord, our needs are met. You're our shepherd. We want for nothing. We glory you, Lord. We give you all glory, Father, for seed that we sow into the various ministries, the building fund, the renovate youth, for ecclesia, for double digits, Lord, for the, for the body, children's church, into other people's lives, Father. We thank you for the press down, shaking together, running over. We thank you for exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think because you are God. You, God, are our refuge. We make you our fortress. And Lord, you're the God that we trust. We trust you for our finances. We trust you for the wholeness in our bodies. We trust you because we are redeemed and we say so. So sickness, lack, and death, eternal separation from you, you have no jurisdiction, no place in our lives. We lift up the name of Jesus this morning. And we present to you the tithe, the seed that we sow, and we thank you that it will be fruitful 
and it will multiply because your word is forever true and settled, and it is settled in our hearts and in our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Jay, do you need these glasses? Me? Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. It's good to be with you all very, 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 very much. Thank you for loving Jesus. Thank you for loving his word. And thank you for expressing that through loving each other. Mm -hmm. We welcome all of you again. Thank you for being here. Get your Bible, if you will, and get your hand out, if you would, please. It's kind of chicken scratch, but, you know. <laughs> I want to start with just something. I don't have time to warm you up and butter you up and get you ready for the grill. Can we just go straight to the grill this morning? That'd be all right. Let's just jump there. Anxiety. Come on. Anxiety. Come on. Let's just get right on the devil this morning, huh? I want you to stay in here. I want you to know that you're not alone. Anytime, now I need you to really, really, really pay attention, okay? I need you to draw with me on the Holy Spirit, okay? We're not here to perform. We can't, I ain't got nothing for you if the Holy Ghost doesn't manifest it, <laughs> right? Neither do you. So we're all leaning on him, looking to him. He knows right where each one of us are at. Now listen, anytime you have multiple people in a company saying the same thing, it's worth looking at. Hmm? It's kind of like stereotype. Anytime there is a stereotype, there's enough truth that it ought to be looked into. <laughs> right? Right? And we've done multiple counselings over the last couple weeks of people fighting strong anxiety, strong irritability. Anybody know what I mean when I say irritated? Amen. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure. Then we need to break out the Websters or not. <laughs> irritated, anxious, old patterns. Come on. Old ways of handling matters. Hmm? Isolation, segregation, depression, oppression. Hmm? Now, I want to encourage you in this. Anytime you embark under the word of God and he is sending you to another place, glory to glory, faith to faith, Huh? There is there is a preparation between bank A and bank B, the other side of the lake. And you need to know that and you need to expect that when you when you're going out. It, it, it's it's between the two is where the storm tries to get you. <laughs> huh? How many of you ever been on a cruise? If you hadn't, you hadn't lived, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, you can, be, you can leave out, you know, and you're leaving out of Galveston. And you're Facebook and live. Yay, peeps. However you do all that mess. And, and, you, <laughs> and I mean, the ship is pushing away. And, oh, we're pushing away. We're pu and you get out there, and I mean, it's like glass. Say Glass. How many of you like glassy seas? Man, learn to appreciate those days. I mean, when there's just no drama. Can we have one day without drama? Huh? Some of you need to go pawn your drama queen crown. Oh, get off that thing. Don't make it an eight if it's only a two. Everything's not 911, folks. But you embark, and I mean it's glassy seas, and the dolphins are just... Everybody, oh, it's just wonderful. And then you wake up the next morning, and you're down at the purser's desk trying to get some seasick medicine. What happened 
in 24 hours and less. The wind changed. Huh? And I'm saying that's encouraging this. And then, the, and then, listen, that may last two days. Maybe a day where all you can do is lay in the bed and, and set your mind. Right? Then the next day you might be out, you know, all over the Lido deck, just wearing it out, wearing that buffet out. <laughs> Up all night at that 24-7 pizza bar, <laughs> the piano bar. But I'm, I'm saying this, same boat, same crew, same captain, same God, same ocean. One day it's glass. The next day, you're, at the, you're visiting in the purser's desk. And you need to understand that from bank A to when he's taking you to a higher place, the next place. Do you know that there's a, there's a word a lot of people use, some people use a lot. I don't think it's really understood, but the Hebrew people understand a word called destiny. Say destiny. Destiny. There are what the, the Word of God teaches us, moed. Say moed. A moed is a Hebrew word, and it's an appointed time on the calendar of God when the clock strikes that time for you and for you and for you and you and you and you. you before you were, while you were in the womb, God knew you, right? I mean, either he did or he didn't. And the word tells us he did. You're an eternal spirit. Hmm? From heaven, because of the word of God, when sperma and eggs come together, it makes human. That's God's design. But the spirit comes from God. God knew you before mom and dad came together. There are moeds, there are appointed times for every person in this room, and you need to hear that and know that. And the enemy tries his best to get you to miss your checkpoints. Because listen to me, your checkpoints are not automatic. God's called you to be this. The calling is automatic. The choosing is automatic. But you meeting, you graduating first grade, going to second, and not getting held back is up to you. That's up to you. And out of obedience to the Spirit, out of obedience to the unction, out of obedience to overcome, say overcome. There, there, there is a biblical truth Many people pray for a double portion of anointing. They and the anointing we've received is, 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 is so much more than Elijah, Elijah could have even cried out for. But anyway, Lord, I want a double portion of the anointing. You're not even walking in a tithe of the portion you have. I mean, I'm not, I'm not being critical. I'm just saying we don't even understand 50% of what God's given us. Huh? Huh? We're still just trying to, I mean, really get rooted in the fact he loves me and he's not mad at me. And it's 2019. Come on, church. And I believe we've done, a, this house has done a great job at not condemning and welcoming and loving and leaving the door of love open. And, and it's always a, we may address the flesh side, but it's with, a, it's with an edification that I'm free from it. So I'm saying for a house that focuses on covenant and grace and what God has done in Christ for you, it's 2019 and we're still just trying to figure out God loves us. It's that big. Huh? His love's that big. It's, it's grand. It's deep. It's wide. It's weighty. But you have moeds, which is an appointed time on the calendar of God. It's God's calendar. And whether you meet those checkpoints or not, is, it, it will be by the leading of God, 
But your, your, your arrival on time at the right place at the right time is, is dependent upon you and your obedience to the Spirit of God. And I want to encourage you in this. Because of all the counseling we've done in the last two weeks, because of all the self-talk I've done in the last two weeks to self, right here, that you're not alone. And Winter Bible Seminar, we, we, we hit a moed. It's obvious. And so between bank A and between where he's taken us now, let's look at, at, at just a couple portions of Scripture of, of, of to know that this happens. Let's look at, we'll just go straight to Mark chapter, chapter 4, please. The Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing. 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 Now, that is a command, but now listen, don't let that close you up. If it's a command, it means that if I'll pull on grace, then I can fulfill that scripture. That I can live anxious free. Isn't it something during Winter Bible Seminar? I mean, oh, the glory and the presence of the Lord. And together, we was together Friday night, we was together all day and into the night Saturday night, together Sunday. Just a wonderful blessing. And then a little bit after that, just, you just kind of feel like you're all alone. Walking around in a dry desert. Am I right? Hmm? Where'd the cloud go? Huh? I feel Jesus. No, I don't. <laughs> you ever been there? <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel Jesus. I ain't, I ain't felt him in days. Have you felt him? <laughs> I know I got him, but I ain't felt him. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> All I need is you. No, I need some money. <laughs> I, mean, I remember them. I remember being, being broke, stuck like Chuck, didn't have a pot or a window to throw it out. And they'd be singing, All I need is you. And I'm singing it thinking, No, I need some, I need some De Nero, dead presidents, frog skins, greenbacks. I, I need some money. <laughs> well, it's because, listen, we're, go, we're headed to a new place. And so let's look at Mark chapter 4 and find out. Let's look at this. Starting in verse 1, he start, he's going to teach them faith all day. The sower sows the word, and he's going to teach faith. All day faith seminar. They've been in an all day faith seminar from Mark chapter 4, verse 1. All day. Say all day. All day they've been hearing the word, hearing the word, hearing the word. Listen to me, church. You've been hearing the word, hearing the word, hearing the word, hearing the word, and hearing the word, those of you that hear. Hearing the word, hearing the word, hearing the word. Accelerate, huh? Cross over the other side. We climb, we march, we enter in, we enter in. Accelerate. Supernatural help, supernatural provision. Jehovah Jireh, the place where God provides, right? All day. This is an all day faith seminar. And at verse 35, 435 says, and on the same day. So this is the same day that the, the, they've been sitting under the teaching of the word. Yeah. Of Jesus. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Not just your favorite TV minister. I'm talking about God in flesh himself been teaching faith all day. And on the same day, when evening had come, this is, this is evening now. They've heard faith all day from the lips of Jesus. Huh? The same day, I mean, the seminar was glorious. They've had been blessed. They've heard from God. Come on. Oh, and it was so wonderful. And the presence of God. And a miracle can happen now, for the presence of the Lord is here. All day in it. Everybody say, all day in the glory. All day in the glory. 
say it again, all day in the glory. And on the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, now listen, this is after the seminar. He said to them, let us cross over to the other side. King James says, let us pass over unto the other side. Let's read that all together. Ready? Let us pass over unto the other side. Hmm. Now watch. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. It's kind of doesn't make much sense when you just read. He's already been in the boat teaching from the boat. So it says, King James, I believe, says they took him even as he was. He was already in the boat. They got in the boat and they headed out. And other little boats were also with him. Verse 37. I want to, I want, let's go to the passion. Let's read it from the passion, please, Miss Cheryl. This, I like the, the one word it uses here. Verse 35, later that day, uh, after it grew dark, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. Notice he didn't say, y'all go. He said, let's. So he's with us. He's with you. Let us pass over to the other side of the lake. And they had sent the crowd away. After they had sent the crowd away, they shoved off from shore with him as he had been teaching from the boat. There you go. And there were other boats that sailed with him. Now watch this right here. Suddenly, as they were crossing the lake, huh? Not before, not after. While they were in transition, say transition. transition. Transition is never comfortable, but it is, it is, it will be a part of a growing church and a growing life. Transition is going to be there. You cannot pr progress without transition. And during transition, you must learn to adapt and overcome you will be forced to learn, be flexible. Oh, yeah. Huh? I'm talking about Stretch Armstrong, like flexible. <laughs> How many of you can be the mentality, I can be this way, I like my rut. Leave my rut alone. Leave my schedule alone. Leave my rut alone. Get out of my rut, matter of fact. Just stay out the way in my rut. How many of you are a rut type of person? Come on, we're not being negative. I'm just, it's our personality. Okay. Transition and rut. Uh, it's just <laughs> change. As they were sailing, suddenly, now this really gets very accurate with these words. Suddenly, as they were crossing, a ferocious tempest arose. Ferocious. ferocious tempest arose with violent winds and waves that were crashing into the boat until it was all but swamped. Last Saturday, listen, I want to just briefly say something here. Many times, not every time, but many times, what you see in the natural is a picture or a manifestation of what's going on in the spirit realm. Huh? Just for example, God, God who is spirit moved from the spirit realm and made four leprous men sound like a, sound like an army in the natural to to armies. And when four four leprous men, they didn't even know what God was doing. Many times God's doing something and you don't even know He's doing it. They're just thinking, there were just four lepers and they said, Let, let's do something, lest we do nothing and die. So they started marching toward the city. Four leprous, whooped down, broke down men. Four leprous men walking toward the city. And God made it sound to the armies that like there was a huge army coming. And all they knew is we're just four leprous men and we may die when we get there. But God made them sound like a massive army to the armies. And when they got there, the armies had done got some hat and got out. And four leprous men showed up and said, look what all is left for us. God had gone before them. This is my, I'm just saying... 
there was something happening in the spirit realm that was affecting the natural realm. And Saturday, I woke up just, I don't, I don't wake up irritated. I mean, I'm not like your morning guy or nothing. I don't like early mornings. I'll be honest with you. I just don't. It takes me a little while to start, you know, feeling my test level's got to balance out. Does that make any sense to some of you men? You know what I'm saying. Come on. Men have testosterone, in case you didn't know that. Okay. All right. That's not a dirty word or nothing, okay? I mean, God made test, okay? Well, you know, just, you know, I like about half a cup of coffee and just kind of get warmed up to the day, you know? And then, and then, you know, there's my confession and there's yada, yada. But I just woke up just a little bit eared back. I mean, just, just a little, just kind of. I know that's strange to you. You've probably never woke up like that. But I was just a little bit eared back. This is not yesterday. This is a week ago. Just a little bit eared back. I just feel my, I just feel a little heat right on the tip of my ears. Just a little bit of salivate in the jaw. Just. And that lasted till about lunch, and we were real quiet in the house. Jody was quiet. I was quiet. I stayed in my man cave. About lunch, I told Jody, I said, I'm going to go over to the office, and I'm just going to, I just need to get with the Lord. I, this, I, said, I, don't, I said, I don't know what to say. It, it, she said, I, just, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. So I go over to the, I walk, you got to get an early start. Traffic gets terrible sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I went to work, <laughs> made it through all that mix master and stuff, got to work, got to the <laughs> office over there. Put my prayer music on. I mean, I set the atmosphere. I like certain music, like what we use in prayer. Set the atmosphere. I'm just trying, I'm setting my mind. I'm not going digging around for no devil. I'm just setting my mind. Yeah. Father, I just worship you. I set myself before you, Lord. I present myself. I have my prayer music. I'm going to tell you one thing you can't do is you're not going to make the anointing manifest. So don't try to perform and, you know, be some puppet or something. No, just, just worship God. It's, the anointing is more than a feeling. More than a feeling. He's more than all that. The Holy Ghost is more than a feeling. He empowers me for my feelings. Well, you know what I'm saying. When you feel eared back, the Holy Ghost is more than a feeling. Right? You need more than feeling here. And I just, man, I was not getting nowhere feeling like. I mean, I was just as irritated worshiping the Lord as I was while I was getting through all that traffic to get to the office. Just as irritated. Father, I pray. Hallelujah. Are you with me, somebody? I mean, I'm irritated trying to praise the Lord. I just sat down and tried. I thought, maybe the music's too loud, so you bring it down just a little bit. Like, oh. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, you pray in the spirit for a while, and then your tongue just gets tired. when it, It's like, oh, now I'm irritated because my tongue feels fat and thick. <laughs> I thought maybe, maybe I just need a donut. I ain't ate today. So maybe my blood, you know, because I can do that. I can, get, I can get hangry if I don't eat by a certain time. So I got me, all we had was like some three-month-old brownie piece, and there's like, well, that'd be fine. It's like, Todd told me the day before, he said, them ain't no good. We bought them for like, I forget. So I said, they're fine. I just got, it's fine. So I thought maybe that's what it is. So, then I went back in my office and I thought maybe a different song will help me. So, you know, you change the music. Like, try that prayer music. Anybody make sense to anybody? Okay, okay. I just want to make sure you can relate. I don't want to waste your time. So I put that on. I wasn't getting nowhere. I thought maybe I just need to change the scenery. I shut the computer down, locked the office. I'm Went back to the house. When I got to the house, Jody said, when you went over to the office, did you feel heavy? I said, no, I didn't feel heavy. I wouldn't call it heavy. I said, I've just been just a, little, just a little bit just irritable, irritated. I mean, you could say just touchy, just a little bit touchy. She said, I have felt just sad all day and not an intercessory sad. Not from the Holy Spirit, just sad. She said, I could just weep all day, just sad. I thought, well, I'm angry. She said, I didn't sit on no hormone patch or nothing. She don't have hormone patch. I know it. <laughs> Are you here, somebody? I thought, all right, we're on the opposite end. I'm angry. 
She's weepy. Okay. So what I did, she came in the man cave, sat down. Well, I knew something was going on, so she told me that, and I told her, and I said, well, and we held hands. Just, I held her hand. I, I was sitting in my car, store, and I held her hand. I said, one thing we know, this is not us. That's right. Come on, listen now. The last thing we're going to do is let this thing yep. splinter us, isolate us, segregate us, and divide us, and whoop us down. Night, night, now, you know. One puts away a thousand. Together, we put away ten grand. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yep. I'm telling you, the strongest partner you have as a spouse is your spouse. Well, they're just not as fiery as me. They still have authority from God because they're your spouse. This thing ain't about a certain style of delivery. It's about we're one. So I said, last thing we're going to do, we're not going to let this thing get between us. I said, this thing is spiritual. And God started ministering to me. Well, listen, I, I it didn't. We, we stood. But then about 10 o'clock that night, I said, I'm going to go up to the church. I said, I, it was still there. We were just quiet. There's a time to just be quiet. Many people have not learned that, but there is a time. <laughs> if you remember that day, it was extremely windy here. Turn tables up on our deck, big tables. Laid them upside down. I'm talking about, I'm talking about WWE SmackDown. Them tables upside down. I walk down on the deck, and the tables are upside down. Chairs are upside down. Say, Wendy. I came up to the church, and listen to me. I didn't have like, oh, unction. It's just what I. It was unction, but I didn't feel nothing. I didn't even. It's not like a ministry unction. I came right in here and I thought, I, I, just, I just need to get before the Lord. This is one of the fastest manifestations I've ever had. And listen, there was the least feeling to it. I came right in here and I said, sometimes you've got to lift your voice louder than your, the volume in your head. Now, I did not say volume is faith, but volume can be a response to faith. But just, sometimes the louder you are, really, the less you believe. But there is a time to get loud. And I got loud. About this loud right here. And I'm not going to say the rest of it that loud because that, you know, there's no sense in that. But I was loud. And I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the demon of anxiety. That's what come up out of my spirit. I said, I rebuke and I bind the devil of anxiousness. I said, and I, I said, I'll plead the blood of Jesus over my mind, over my thoughts. I bring every thought that's contrary to God's best, I bring it down in the name of Jesus. And then after that, for about 30 minutes, I just did this. Didn't say a word, just walked back and forth. I was a new man time I left. I got home. The spiritual temperature in the house is different. Jody was fine. Now listen, next day, I had a counseling session with somebody experiencing the same things. The next day, counseling session with the person experiencing the same things. Two days later, counseling session with the person. Listen, you need to know when, when it's multiple people you need to remind yourself, you're not alone. You're right on time. Huh? Listen, if you went on a cruise and it started out glassy seas and then it got rocking and rolling, you wouldn't think, I must be on the wrong boat. This one has strong waves. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's just part of the trip. The nature of the beast, if you will. Are you with me, somebody? Huh? Sometimes that's just what happens. But, but, but you, you, don't, you don't jump off the boat. Ah! It's gotten wavy. <laughs> ah! I must have got on the wrong boat. This one is going to Honduras, right? Yes, you're on the right boat. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is the captain of your vessel. We're experiencing some strong wind turbulence. If you need drama, mean go see the purser's desk. Anybody? Please stay away from the sides. Please keep all appendages inside the railing. Come on, you need to hear it. We may experience a little bit of heavy wind. Please 
All smokers choose not to smoke right now. <laughs> please, if you spit, do not spit over the side, please. It may blow in someone's face. Come on. You get on a plane, you know you're on the right flight, but that comes with uh, Ladies and gentlemen, if you will, notice above your head, there's an oxygen mask. In case we're experiencing strong turbulence and wants to have this and this, well, there's provision made, but they're saying we could get into some storms. Yeah. Are you with me, somebody? And I just want to remind you that just because you've experienced a storm don't mean you've missed God. Huh? If that's fact, then Jesus missed God, and we know that ain't true. If that's a fact, then Paul, he never got with God, if that's the truth. He stayed in storms. Huh? I mean, Storm Rita. Tomorrow, Storm Henry, or whoever. <laughs> no, it's part of it. It's part of the overcomer's life. But I just want to encourage you today that you're not alone. It says that suddenly as they were crossing, I mean in the will of God, they had the rhema from God. Let us go to the other side. Rhema, faith has come. They step out in obedience on rhema. <laughs> suddenly the storm comes. You ever been there? And so <clears throat> let's look at this right quick. Go on down here to where it says uh, Hebrews 11, and we'll, we'll wrap this up. But Hebrews 11 I want to just look at six ingredients for staying on course. It's vital that you stay on course. Don't abandon ship. Whatever ship would be to you. Huh? Don't leave the job lest God told you leave the job. Huh? Don't leave your mate lest God told you leave your mate. All right. Don't leave the church lest God's led you to go somewhere else. Come on. Yes. Don't do anything out of anxiety. Anybody here with me today? Yes, anxiety. Yes. Pressure. Mm -mm. The Passion Bible says, humble yourself before God and God will exalt you as you leave the timing of it in his hands. Well. That's a great translation. Yes. One of the best there. But don't make decisions out of pressure. Boy, I tell you, if you want to, you know, faith teachers wouldn't like the way I'm going to word this, but I'm going to word it that way because it's me. And I, I do believe in faith, and I'm a faith teacher too. But if you want to lock me up concerning you, just pressure me. Anybody here with me? Justin, get your hand up right now. <laughs> I'm playing. If you want to lock me smooth down, you just put pressure on me. Any kind. <laughs> Any kind of carnal, carnal pressure. Well, you need to, or just, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to explain, but when, when it's not lead, it's just pressure forcing me. It, it starts ruining the conversational aspects of our relationship. Nobody likes to be pressured. It's the dominion factor in you. It's the God part of you in you that's been told have dominion that don't like being dominated. And so don't do anything out of, out of feeling forced, out of feeling driven. The Spirit of God leads. He don't drive. He leads, and he leads with peace. Many times you're not going to have the, uh, the, the strong unction of God. It's just going to be the still, real, s still, subtle. Yes, sir. Just, I have peace about it. Now listen, when I say that, I checked with this, now you say this. Just because pressure comes and discontentment is there, listen, listen, you never, ever, pray for or about change ever ever you're never ever ever told in that word of God just pray for change no people pray for ch you do that when you're discontent and the devil's going to open up a door for you and you're just going to swear that it's God and it's not God fact is you were discontent and unwilling to overcome 
And you're looking for a rescue boat to let down so you can get in it. And I'm telling you, you'll get, you'll get dwarfed if not killed in that little rescue boat. Are you here? You don't ever make decisions when you know you're just discontent. And you're not stupid. You have the, the Spirit of God in you. You know when it's just, I'm discontent. Now, y'all trying to blame it on everything else, but the fact is, I am discontent, and I've got to get content with just me and God alone. Ain't no job can keep me happy. Ain't no spouse can keep me happy. Ain't no new home keep me happy. A new car can't keep me happy. Are you with me, somebody? Isn't it true? So well, just because you're discontent, you be very aware. You don't, we're not told to pray for, well, Lord, I'm just asking you for a change. No, the thing is you just stay in hot pursuit of your relationship with God and he'll lead you where you need to be. You don't ever pray about change. It's completely unscriptural. Father, listen, well, how would you pray? Father, I thank you that my steps are ordered by the Lord. There you go. Father, I just hate this job. I hate this job. I'm asking you for a change. You better get out of hate, and you better get off that prayer, and you better get back to, Father, I know I can trust you, and you sent me here, and you'll send me out if and when I'm ever to go out. But my steps are ordered by the Lord, not by discontentment. Are you with me, somebody? My steps are ordered by the Lord, not frustration. My steps are ordered by the Lord, not pressure. My steps are ordered by the Lord, not irritated. Come on, y'all. I'm talking about how you grow in these things. From side A of the lake to side B of the lake is going to be a lot of preparation to get you prepared for what's coming when you hit the other side of the lake. Come on. The anointing is free. But to live in it is not. Hmm? To live in his presence. To live in him moving for you and working for you. Right? It is costly. I wonder if many times if, if we, we don't need to be careful that we don't forget Jesus said, take up your cross. Huh? Listen, I'm going to say something. Don't get mad at me, okay? Don't write no, no dirty emails. Don't send me no dirty texts. I mean, I, just, I, just, I won't even read them. I've learned not to read them. It just gives you more to overcome. Just delete. I believe in blessings, and you know I do. I believe in financial prosperity, and you know I do. But I'm going to tell you something. At the root of this thing, we do what we do. Huh? Same reason the disciples did what they did. A call and a relationship with Jesus. And before I'm here for me, I'm here for the call. And before you're here for you and yours, you're here for the call. I'm, when I say here, I'm not about talking about the church. I'm talking about obedient to God. Paul said, Paul said, Jesus will be magnified in my body, whether it's through living or whether it's through death. Jesus will be glorified. Come on, somebody. I believe in blessings, and you know I do. But this thing, this thing is a whole lot bigger than, oh, I'm believing for that new car. I kind of get, I get, I can get burnt out on that real quick. If you got a car, you better, you better get a smile on your face. Amen. Are you with me, anybody? Huh? This thing's bigger than you just, well, I, I just want that new Tahoe, Lord. Man, forget that Tahoe. Huh? This thing gets bigger than those things. It gets bigger in a hurry. Why are we here? You know, I told a guy the other day, I said, because he asked some questions, and I said, listen, I said, you know, I understand this may chap a lot of, a lot of other pastors off. I, to be honest, I really don't care. I don't care. I said, I've done my own study, enough study, and I'm submitted to enough good teaching. Um, I'm comfortable in my skin, and that is this. My job is not to be beating the streets trying to go get the sinner. It's not. And there's nowhere in the Word of God where you can show me that it is. My job is for the equipping of the born-again person to mature, spiritually mature, by leading and by example, by teaching and doctrine, to equip 
the saint. Jesus gave gifts unto men, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Mine, in, the, in the office I'm in, it happens to be the pastoral office. And listen, you have to get comfortable in your skin. Not sure why I'm saying this, but maybe we all need to hear it. M the grace in, on my life is for the equipping of the saint. For the equipping of the saint. For the equipping of the saints. See? The pastoral office is a huge grace, y'all. The evangelist is primarily interested in hearing you say, Jesus is Lord. His mission's accomplished. The pastoral office. You're dealing with them from nursery age to toddler's age to children's age, huh? To double digits age, to youth church age, to college and career age, to young adult age to most senior and adult age, premarital, marital, after marital, if marital didn't work, you're, dealing, you're work, walking through all these things, saints. He did not say he mourned over them because they were like sheep having no evangelist. He said they were like sheep having no shepherd, the same Greek word, pastor. Sheep need a pastor. A pastor needs a pastor. A pastor needs a pastor. And then you work it all the way up to the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ. And I'm going to say this, and this is where you can really hair lip some, some, some people. It's not your job to be going out and banging on every door and handing out fake $20 bills that have a little prayer in them. Boy, that always ticked me off. I thought I'd found a 20. Listen to me. Your job as the born again is there anybody born again here and you know it? If, you have, if you're born again and you know it, raise your hand. Yeah. Your, your assignment is you go to your assignment. We'd call it a job. But you go to your assignment that you know that for right now, this is where God has me. I don't care if it's making, making flat sucker sticks. If you know you're, you're doing what God has called you to do, you make the best flat sucker sticks for the sucker maker that you make. Because whether you ever get promoted out of the sucker making stick department or not is up to how you make them sucker sticks for God. How many pickles did... <laughs> I did it. Whew, Lord, that was grace. I didn't slip up and say one foul word and all that. I was, that's what I was thinking. Saying, no, no, be careful, be careful, be careful. <laughs> but it, you, listen, you know where God has appointed you right now listen to me please listen I'm, I'm talking about th this is ingredients for staying on course meeting different moeds in your life if you, if you really really want to fulfill God's plan for your life these things are mandatory because those things aren't automatic you do it as though there's nothing afterwards this is where I'm at for, forever. I know. Just keep swallowing. We'll get it down. Keep swallowing. Ma'am, that's, yeah, that's being content. I'm going to do this with all my heart because I know God's put me here. Well, I just don't agree with everything. It ain't, it, nobody asked you to agree with everything. We just asked you to stay in agreement. I can disagree with you and yet stay in agreement. Come on. And you treat your job that way? If it's forever. Come on, y'all. I'm doing this because God put me here. God sent me here. You know... I've had this thought a, a lot of times and I've never brought this out. I just feel to bring it out for a minute. <clears throat> there are people that are dependent upon your obedience to God. Amen. Acts 14, Paul and Barnabas show up at Lystra. Say Lystra. Lystra. They show up, listen to me, stay with me now. 
They show up at Lystra. They preach the gospel. And Paul, seeing the man had faith, said to him, Stand up right on your feet. And the man stood up, and the people rejoiced, and some called them gods. And they called one Zeus and one, one uh, uh, whatever other one of those gods. And, and Paul and Barnabas ripped their clothes, and they said, Men, don't do this. We're just men like you. And, and it says that the Jewish re religious leaders rose up and stoned Paul unto death, led him out of the town, laid him. And it says the disciples gathered around him. Are you still listening to me? The disciples gathered around him, and literally they prayed life back into him, and Paul got up. Now listen, chapter 16. And Paul went into the town and... Uh, or it's, yeah, it says, and, and Paul, having gone back to Lystra. Now, Lystra ain't a fun place. Coach, can I have a fan, please, sir? Lystra. Come on, stay with me. Say Lystra. Lystra is where he was stoned to death. Lystra it could be a good opportunity to, <clears throat> to not be content. How them people feel about you. How them people treated you. Come on. And yet God told him, I need you to go back to Lystra. Everybody say, back to Lystra. Back to Lystra. And listen to me, it says, And Paul, having come back to Lystra, met a young man named Timothy. There's where he met Timothy. What if he had a said, I'm not going back to Lystra. They hurt my feelings. Come on, y'all. I'm not going back to Lystra. They just don't appreciate me. Hey, did God tell you to go back? Yeah, it don't matter. He appreciates you. <laughs> Are you with me, anybody? Well, they just don't appreciate me. It's not their job to appreciate you. It's your job to know that God appreciates you. Come on, a little, little strong, but it's, it's maturity. Huh? This kind of stuff keeps you from just floundering out in the middle of the lake and all the sharks under you watching you just go <laughs> on top of the water. Come on. Because these things aren't automatic. The destiny of God, you reaching point A when you're supposed to be at A, point B now, when you're, that's up to you hearing and being very obedient and very sensitive to the Spirit of God. I'm talking about you fulfilling God's plan for your life. Moeds, appointments. What if you was on a flight and you had to be in San Francisco by such and such a time to meet a plane 10 minutes after you land and get on that plane and go to Hawaii, we'll say. What if, what if the captain said, we're not going to be able to land in time. You're going to miss your flight to yada yada. You can do those things spiritually. You can miss your flight. Come on. By not being at the right place at the right time. Not being sensitive to God. Or hearing from God, but being unwilling to deal with Lystra. Being unwilling to go back to Lystra if he tells me go back. Ugh. God, I don't, oh, God, I don't want to go back to Lystra. I need you to go back to Lystra. Do you trust God? Boil it all down. That's where it gets the rubber hits the road right there. Do you trust God? Oh, yeah. Trust and obey with no other way. Do you? <laughs> Do you? Oh, yes, I trust him. Really? Really? If I trust him, he can tell me anything to do, and I'll do it with all my heart. And I'll be there. I'll go into it as though it's forever. And I'll never pray about a change. I just know my steps are ordered. Because listen, if you're the righteous there and you are being mistreated, God can move you or God can move them. Huh? But it's vital for your own growth that you just... You keep the mentality and keep your confession. The Lord orders my steps. Frustration is not ordering my steps. Anxiety is not. Offended is not going to order my. 
The steps of a good man are ordered by offense. No. <laughs> the steps of a, the righteous man are ordered by unforgiveness. Mm -mm. No. But you do have to be, acknowledge those things and you have to bring them before the Lord and you have to dust your hands of them. I do this a lot of times. I give that to you, Lord. I give that to you. Right quick, we're closing up right here. It's only 11.59. Here we go. Six ingredients for staying on course. I'm going to read something. Read Hebrews 11.24 so that this will make sense and we'll read this together and we'll close. Pray you've gotten something out of this today. Hebrews 11.24 says this. By faith, Moses chose God's will. Hey, we have it up there. Let's just read it together. We'll read 24 to 29, please. Let's read it together, please. Faith enabled Moses to choose God's will. For although he was raised as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he refused to make that his identity. Stop right there. He refused. By faith, he refused. By faith, he refused to make that his identity. All right. I wrote in my notes... I refuse anxiety. I refuse offense. I refuse the old way. There, there, listen, when the wind's blowing like that, you're going to be tempted to get something the way you've always gotten it instead of trusting God. Come on. And boil it all down, it's manipulation. You boil that down, it's fear. Because you're afraid God won't manifest it for you, so you've got to go about it the old way of getting it. Anybody with me? Yeah, but no, we can trust God. Say, I can trust God. So by faith, he refused. I wrote in my notes, can the Holy Spirit say amen to it? Well, I just know it's God. Can the Holy Spirit say amen to it? Did he say amen to it in the word of God? If he didn't, it ain't. <laughs> Am I right? Oh, yes, I just believe I have the leading of the Lord. If he never led like that in the Word, you ain't got his leading on it. These are just things to always to keep them before you, Saint. Let's read the next verse, please. By faith, choosing instead to suffer mistreatment with the people of God, Moses preferred faith's certainty above the momentary enjoyment of pleasure, sin's pleasure. Now, let me read it from this because I like the way... This says it right here. Listen close, please. Is that verse 25? Okay, it's on the next one. That's good. So he chose. He chose the will of God. He chose God's way. He chose God's timing. Do you trust the timing of the Lord? That's a major question, saints. You, you know why you have to trust the timing of the Lord? Because without God's timing, the devil's going to set you up for something you're not yet prepared for, and you're going to get devoured and bully beat down by the devil. That's a fact of how it happens. Because you weren't willing to be prepared. You, you weren't willing to go through 12 years and graduate. See what I'm saying? How would you feel... <laughs> Have you seen that one commercial? It'd be the same way. I go say I go to the clinic and, and some some guy walks in and says, "Hey, uh, what's your name?" Uh, well, I'm Jason. Okay, I'm Fred. Uh, okay, are you the doctor here? Oh no, I just work here. Uh, let me let me let me write your prescription here. Uh, hang on. Uh, wh what do you do here? Well, I sweep the floors every once in a while. Uh, uh, now let me write your prescription up here. He's not prepared to be writing me no prescription. Are you here? And that's, it's no different than when if a person will not let God prepare them and fully equip them, they just, they just want promotion. They just want the next whatever. But it's the time between that prepares you and equips you for it. This better than your amen. And <laughs> it is good, isn't it? <laughs> So look at the next verse. Let's read the next one, please. He found his true wealth in suffering abuse for being anointed. Now listen to the way this Bible says it. He esteemed and valued the reproach of Christ. 
the anointing as greater riches, riches than the treasures in Egypt. Do you value the anointing and the presence of God more than you devour, than, than you, uh, than you uh, value and esteem your discontentment? What do you value most? What you're moving on is what you value most. To value the presence of God. To value the anointing for the call of God. Isn't that right? You come to understand that without the anointing, you can't do nothing. Amen. I'm going to tell you this. You can't think a, th a same thought without the anointing. I mean crazy without the anointing of God, the peace of God, the presence of God. So, so, so far by faith, he refused to stay on course, there's some things you're going to have to refuse. I refuse to do it that way because it's not the God way. It's not the Word way. By faith, he chose. There are certain things I choose. Number three, by faith, he valued and esteemed the anointing. Look at the next verse, please. Verse 27. Holding faith's promise, Moses abandoned Egypt. He abandoned Egypt. He abandoned the old way. He abandoned the way he was brought up. You might have to just abandon, divorce, and forsake some family traditions, as Hank Williams Jr. was saying. Family tradition. You might have to forsake some of them to do it the God way. Am I right? There's a whole chapter Jesus said, Now you've been told eye for eye, tooth for tooth, but I say... Now you have heard, da -da 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 -da, but I say. Now you have heard, da -da 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 -da, but I say. You going to do it the way you've heard it or the way he said? Come on, y'all. We're wrapping this up, but listen. He forsook Egypt. He abandoned Egypt. I'm going to tell you, you can get, they came out of Egypt in less than half a day. Out. I mean, once they're out of the gate, they're out. But it took over 40 years to get Egypt out of them. Yes, sir. Yes, it did. Huh? Anything you've been set free from, are you still here? You already left and gone home. Anything you've been set free from always has potential to get in you again, and you would like it. I didn't say you'd like for it to get in. I said, but you would like it. That's why it can be the temptation. A temptation is not a temptation if you don't like it. What you like, I might not like. What I like, you might not like. But if it once called you its house, you got to be careful that it don't try to move up in there again and go to rearranging the furniture again and getting it back in the order that it liked it. How many of you know you you gotta you gotta you gotta stay a custodian of your soul? You gotta keep the house clean. It's not automatic. Well, I'm born again, huh? Well, that don't mean you can't think crazy if you don't stay born again, if you will. Huh? Amen. Okay. So he forsook Egypt. I wrote, he forsook the old way. He abandoned plan B. Yeah. I like that. He abandoned plan B. Amen. Next verse, please. Faith stirred Moses to keep, is the word keep, the Passover. By faith, there are certain things you must keep. Guard. Number one, your heart above all things. Are you listening? So first of all, by faith, he refused. Number two, he chose. Number three, he esteemed and valued the anointing. Well, there's, we can talk some more on that, but we won't today. Number four, he forsook. He abandoned Egypt. Number five, he kept are you seeing the pattern? Now look at the last one. Watch this. Let's go to the New King James. Please, Miss Cheryl, for this verse. Let's, let's read the verse. By faith they passed through. Here's what we've been talking about. Notice this. By faith, by faith it says he refused, he chose, he esteemed, he forsook, he kept they pass through. You affect more than you. Did you hear me or did you miss that? 
By faith, he refused, he chose, he esteemed, he forsook, he kept, they passed through. I affect you. You affect me. Notice that there ain't no passing through without refusing, choosing, valuing, forsaking, and keeping. Notice there ain't no crossing over to the other side, getting to the other side without a time of refusing, choosing, valuing, esteeming, forsaking, and guarding, and keeping. Are you here? Everybody want to enter in, but don't everybody want to esteem. Everybody want to want to enter in, but don't everybody want to refuse. Hello. And between point A and point B, there's going to be things that the Spirit of God's going to show me. I need to begin refusing that. I need to begin choosing that. I need to begin to esteem and value that. I need to forsake and abandon that. Come on. I need to keep and guard that. We pass through. I wrote my notes, commit to getting there. You have to commit to getting to the other side. When it don't, when it don't feel fun anymore. Huh? Huh? Ain't much else to say. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You get something. You, you hold those steps, Saint. I promise you're right on time. I don't care if you've done it all right or not. You're on time. We're, you, you, we're a company. We're moving as one mouth, one voice, one, one person. Stay obedient to God. Don't let the devil trick you. Talk, don't let him get you abandoned ship, lower down a lifeboat. Ain't nothing wrong with the boat you're on. Whatever that boat is. I'm talking about where God has you, see. Trust God. Keep trusting God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand on our feet, if you would. We give him the glory. He's for us, y'all. And we are overcomers. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, thank you for your people. Thank you for your hand that is upon them, Lord. Thank you for the anointing within and upon them. We give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name, can you say amen? amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Thank you so much for being here today. Communion. communion. I was just kidding. <laughs> Let's take communion. Let's receive communion. You can stay on your feet. Let's do this. Yeah, we got this. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Go ahead, ushers. Go ahead, ushers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's good, y'all. It's good in the hood, like they would say. God's for us. We're getting there. We're, we're going to reach our deadline. Huh? Huh? We will hit the Moed right on time, huh? Yes, we will. God knows where I'm at. Say that. God knows where I'm at. Say it again. God knows where I'm at. Listen, I'm going to ask you to do something. I, I've never asked this, but I'm going to. This is a very timely word. It's a rhema word for where the company is at. And I'm going to ask you, if you know you need to, I'm going to ask you, that it won't be given to you today, but just make a request that you want to see that you need something you can listen to over and over. Keep, it gets you to the other side. Are you with me here? There's some messages you can hear and you get, you get it. And you don't, I'm, I'm, but there's other times that, that it's rhema where the company is. There's a lot of things said today that'd be good to hear it again. Huh? Maybe by 2 o'clock you might need to hear it again. <laughs> but if you know that that would bless you, let the media department know you would like one. Or easier than that, what, what I would do, I'd just go to Facebook Live or YouTube, and that way you can hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it and hear it. 
That's why we put them on there. So, so take, uh, take advantage of what's, what's there, what's made available. Father, we thank you for Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for the body that was broken for our complete deliverance from, from death, hell, and sin, Lord. We receive freedom right now. Contrary to any feeling right now, we step by faith above it. We choose the Word of God right now. We choose healing by faith. We choose joy. We choose hope and happiness. We choose longevity. We choose to rejoice. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive the body. Thank you, Jesus. We honor the blood of Jesus that is still speaking on our behalf. We honor the blood. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood, Lord. We honor it, we esteem it, and we value it right now. Listen, this is open to anybody, okay? Only thing I encourage you to do, you better esteem it and you better value it before you drink it. Set your mind, set your heart. God's not condemning you, but you can drink condemnation. God don't condemn you, but you can drink condemnation if you want to esteem it and value it. I esteem the blood. I value this cup and what it stands to represent. I thank you, Father. We thank you. 